Hi everybody, Professor Mankowski here. And in this video, we're gonna continue our introduction to the hypothesis test process. To recap what we learned in the last video, we found out that the hypothesis test process consists of five steps. Stating your HO and your H1, or your null and alternative hypothesis, finding your critical values, computing your Z formula, applying a decision rule, and then creating a qualitative summary of what happened in the preceding four steps. We also learned a lot more about stating your HO and your H1 and finding your critical values. In particular, we saw that when we're stating HO and H1, there's three different variations we can have for a hypothesis test. A left tail test, a right tail test, and a two tail test. And then we found out what the context clues are in a question that tells us which variation we're going to do. Critical values. For critical values, we found out critical value is determined by your alpha level. And remember, your alpha level is gonna be different in each question, so we're gonna have slightly different critical values for each hypothesis test. When we find critical values for a two-tail test, we also have to remember to take our value and split it into two, uh, divided in half before we find the critical values. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take a look at the same three questions that we had done steps one and two for in the preceding video, and we're gonna finish the hypothesis process for those questions. So pause the video if you need to, to read the question. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick summary of what the situation was. If you're a peanut farmer in Virginia, uh, Virginia you're doing an average yield of about 3,000 pounds per acre. And an inventor came along. They invented this brand new fertilizer for peanut farming. But before they could sell it, they had to show that it worked. So they went and tried it out. They experimented with it on 60 individual plots of land, or 60 farms. And they looked at the average yield. The average yield was 3,120 pounds. Here's where we come into the picture. We're statisticians. We need to figure out is 3,120 pounds significantly higher than 3,000 pounds? If it's significantly higher, it means that we can attribute the increased yield to the fertilizer. And that's really good news for the inventor. If it's not significantly higher, it means that you could have gotten that yield without using the fertilizer. And that's bad news for the inventor. So keywords in the question, keywords were increased. That let us know that we were gonna engineer a right tail test. Our critical value in step two was 1.65. And what we're gonna pick up here in this video is what do we do with that 1.65? What do we use the critical value for? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the curve and we're gonna shade all the area from 1.65 to the end of the tail. And of course, that's been shaded for us already, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna label that as what we call the critical region. Now, the critical region depends on your alpha level, and your alpha level is gonna be different for each question. That means that for each hypothesis test, the critical region is gonna be in a slightly different area. What we need to do is we have to figure out, did the sample average fall in that critical region? So how would you do that? How would you know if it landed in the critical region? The only thing we know right now about the critical region is that it starts exactly 1.65 standard deviations from the population average. So if we can figure out how many standard deviations X bar landed away from the population average, it should give us the answer. As it turns out, the central limit theorem will do exactly that for us. It'll measure the distance between X bar and mu in terms of standard deviations. And this is gonna bring us straight into step three. So for step three, we're gonna print up our central limit theorem on the screen. Pause the video for a minute. See if you can work out what you get when you compute the Z formula. So we end up with 1.61. Now, some books are gonna to refer to 1.61 as your test value. What we need to do is we have to take that 1.61 and now we're gonna compare it to the critical region. And it turns out to be the case that 1.61 falls outside the critical region. And that's gonna give us a lot of the information we need to make the judgment call. Do we accept or reject the null hypothesis? Here's how we do it. In step four, we're gonna apply a decision rule. That decision rule states that if our test value lands inside the critical region, then we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we're going to accept the null hypothesis. In our case, because the 1.61 landed outside the critical region, 
we're going to accept the null hypothesis. Now, before we make this official with the summary statement, let's summarize two really important takeaways. When we start the sampling process, remember that we're assuming the null hypothesis is actually correct. So we're expecting that the sample average is going to land very close to the population average. And we call that effect sampling distance. It's like saying there's going to be a very minuscule difference between the sample average and the population average. Now, what turns out to be the case, though, is that the critical region is not considered a reasonable distance from the population average. It's not considered a minuscule distance away from it. So that means if your sample average lands inside the critical average, that's giving you enough information to say that you no longer support the null hypothesis. It must not be the correct hypothesis. Instead, you're going to back the alternative hypothesis, the H1. So now we have all the information we need to make our summary statement. We're gonna say it appears that there's not enough evidence to show that the new fertilizer is making an increase in the yield. And notice we're using the word appears. That's because our answer is still based on statistics and probability at the end of the day. It means it's not 100% perfect. So that's why we're using the phrasing appears. Let's take a look at another practice question. Uh, pause the video if you like for a couple minutes to read the question again. So if you're a federal government employee, your salary is about $59,593 on average. And there's a belief that if you're a state employee, you're making less money doing the same work that a federal employee would do. So we need to figure out if that's true or not. So 30 different employees were salaried, uh, were sampled. And it turned out that they were averaging a salary of $58,800. So we have to figure out, is $58,800 significantly less than $59,593? If that's true, that means that if you're a state employee, you might want to look for the same kind of work, but for the federal government, because you're going to be making more money. And if the reverse is true, if $58,800 is not significantly less than 59,593, we can say that the discrepancy was just merely due to sampling error. So key words in the question were less than. That alerted us to doing a left tail test. So for step one, we stated that we believed mu for a null hypothesis was equal to $59,593. Alternative hypothesis, mu is less than 59,593. For step two, our critical value was negative 2.33, and that means that the critical region is gonna start at exactly a distance of 2.33 standard deviations below the population average. So we have to figure out, is X bar more than 2.33 standard deviations away from mu, the population average? That's going to roll us right into step three. So pause the video for a minute or two, calculate out our Z value. Let's see what we get. So we end up with a test value of negative 2.9. And just like we did in the last question, we're going to pair, compare negative 2.9 to our critical region. And our value negative 2.9 is clearly going to fall inside that critical region. So that means that when we apply the decision rule, the decision rule said that if our test value falls inside the critical region, reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to say that we're rejecting the null hypothesis. Now let's make it all official. In our summary statement, we can say it appears that state employees are earning less amount than the federal employees are. Let's take a look at one more practice question. So pause the video if you'd like for a couple minutes, read through the question. Okay, so if you're a public school teacher, you're making a salary of about $39,385. And in a particular region of the country, there's a belief that you're making an amount that's different than this. So to test that out, find out if it's really true, 50 public school teachers in that region were sampled. And it turned out that they were averaging $41,680 in salary. Now, we have to figure out, is $41,680 significantly different from 39385 
So the word different let us know we were doing a two-tailed test. When we went for our critical values, we had to take that alpha and split it by two. And our critical values came out to be plus or minus 1.96. So for step three, take a minute, pause the video, see what you get when you work out your Z value. Okay, our Z value calculated out to be negative 4.82. And when we look at where that's positioned on our bell curve, we see that it's well into the rejection region. So now it's time to think about the next step. When we do step four, we apply the decision rule. And the decision rule says again, if we see that we have the test value in the critical region, we're gonna reject HO. So our conclusion is going to be, it appears that teachers' salaries in this particular region are actually different than the national average. One really important thing that we have to mention when we do a two-tailed test, a mistake that a lot of students make is when they do their conclusion, they think back to what their sample average was. And if it's higher than the population average, they're tempted to say in their conclusion that it appears the teacher's salaries in that region are higher than the national average. But don't do that. That's a really big mistake because remember, we set up for a two-tailed test. Statistically, we're not at all set up for a right tail test. We use the two tail test procedure. So our conclusion is specifically going to say that in this particular region, the salaries are different than the national average.